Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentle them, welcome in to the most important video you may watch right now if you are fresh into the release of Lost Ark. I'm hearing a lot of anxiety and screaming and worry over, have I chosen the right main class? Is this the one for me? They all look so interesting. I want to play all five or six or 15 of them. Have I bricked my character? Am I screwed? Can I change main classes now? So today we're dedicating this whole video on firstly, putting your minds at ease on the stress that you may be feeling over picking your main class or your favorite class in Lost Ark. And secondly, going over how you may change main characters if you'd like and what the stipulations are that go along with that. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. Let's start the video with some brief disclaimers so I catch everyone at the front of the video before people tune out. The first is the real main character choice the one that you should be considering as your i need to have my main decided by then comes at about eye level 1340 and we'll get into this later before that point there are many opportunities where you can easily and freely change your main character but we'll get into the details further on in the video the next point is it's impossible to brick or completely ruin your character there aren't any dead ends or impossible permanent choices that you can make that will absolutely brick your character. The only thing you lose when investing in a character you don't ultimately play as your main character is time and resources, which can be earned again. And the last disclaimer is keep in mind that most players that play this game for years on end play an average of three to five characters regularly as you get benefits that are shareable between your characters from playing each one. So you're actually encouraged to have multiple. You want to have one that you're pouring all your extra tradable resources into, but you do want to be playing more than one. Now let's get into the process of changing your main character and everything you need to know about it. There's some knowledge to be known here. Think of each tier of the game, the tier one, tier two, and tier three in Lost Ark as restarts of the game much like going up to a new expansion in other MMOs would be. Think that many folks change their main class when transitioning between expansion packs because the progression is essentially reset and they get a fresh start, so why not? It's the exact same with Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 in Lost Ark. So if we're answering the question, when is the best time to change your main character? The answer is when you transition between tiers. This is because of two main reasons. The first is that each tier has its own unique upgrade materials that can only be used in that tier. When you change tiers, you have to grind the materials again, and any materials you left behind in the previous tier are no longer useful for that character at all. The second, and is one that I think needs a lot more awareness in the community, is that once you achieve a new tier on one character, you're able to greatly improve the growth rate of any character that is in the tier that came before. Let's use the first example. Once you reach eye level 600, you can progress to Yorn and advance to tier 2 from tier 1. Your first Chaos Dungeon in tier 2 drops eye level 802 gear, which is a huge leap from eye level 600 and is the new baseline eye level for tier 2. However, once you reach an average eye level of 802, you can then go to your stronghold and upgrade the honing process in tier one. These two upgrades increase your success chance and reduce your shard cost for all characters in that tier. So once you get one character to tier two, it then makes it easier for all the characters that come after to level up. You'll go to your stronghold, go to the bottom of the lab list, all the way down until you see the tier honing success rate and tier required XP for honing. You have this for every tier every time you tier up. So you have tier one honing success rate. This increases the success rate of all honing processes from level one to 15 in tier one by 20% on top of the existing. So it'll take a 80% success rate and turn it into a 100% guaranteed success rate across the whole tier. You can also reduce the required XP, which reduces the XP cost, which is going to be your harmony shards or your blue shards or your orange shards. 
This is the shards that only are attached to your character. The cost of that goes down overall by 20% for equipment level 1 through 15. Putting these two concepts together means that you get a fresh start in a new tier, and you also make it easier for any alt characters that are behind your current main to gear up. The next thing to know is that tiers are top heavy. You probably noticed this already if you're progressing towards the end of tier 1 and beyond. For example, going from eye level 302 to eye level 400 is child's play when compared to going from i level 540 to i level 600 and this is by design which means if you are early on in a tier's progression then it costs you little to nothing to switch characters but once you are towards the end of a tier you've invested so much into that character because the progression is top heavy that you gain more by just finishing out the current tier and then switching characters when you tier up again. Now that we understand that tiers are top heavy in their progression, that each tier is essentially a reset on your gear progression, therefore equalizing your characters at the start of a tier, and you realize that completing a tier makes the previous tier easier to grind, we can see that you have many opportunities to change your main character as you progress through the game. In fact, I'd say you don't have to choose your main character until you are partway through tier three, which is the current tier in the game with no tier coming after it uh, which comes at about eye level 1340 so if you're sitting at level 50 eye level 360 questioning your main class then go ahead and switch have fun experiment you will have many opportunities to change the character you've invested in and lastly if you have one character and you want to switch it's important to cover this part leveling alt characters if you're under level 50 keep in mind that you get two free level 50 boosts once you reach level 50 and complete the Vern region questline. This can be checked by going to your quest log and looking under the category, category Vern and doing those light blue quests until they are completed, which will give you your power passes. You get one for completing Vern and you get another for using the first. So you get two free boosts to level 50, giving you a total of three level 50 characters as soon as you finish Vern on your first. Then if you want even more characters, you can boost characters for the cost of 600 gold through knowledge transfer to level 50. Don't feel pressured to have everything figured out now. And just for the sake of being thorough, let's quickly walk through the knowledge transfer process. Make your character, then load into the character. When you're done, go ahead and skip the prologue. You'll spawn in Runa Pass. Just go ahead and move forward, do all the quests with Armin, and head over to Prideholm. Once you land in Prideholm, go all the way through the quest line, doing the first few orange quests that it offers, and you're working towards unlocking your song list. And a couple quests in, you'll reach the bard here, talk to her, finish the quest line, and you'll unlock the first song, which unlocks your song list. Uh, unlock the song of escape and then you go to your sis your sheet music here and then go to the hearth and home and go to your stronghold once here you want to go to the knowledge transfers machine which is in your stronghold on the far left in this island you do have to do a very short quest to unlock it but just head over to this side is where you uh, pick up the first one click on the knowledge transfer unlock and then on the target yourself you can see that you can go from level 10 to level 50 and it'll give you a, a gear set of 302 and takes about eight hours and costs you 600 gold one crucial note that i want to make sure everyone knows as i see people get confused by this all the time knowledge transfers can only be done one segment at a time how they what they do is they allow you to skip the story quest lines that allow you and the leveling requirements that gets you from one step to another, but it doesn't allow you to skip the eye level requirements, which means a lot of people say, well, great, why don't I just get one character to Phaeton and then I can boost for 1600 gold all my characters straight to Phaeton. It doesn't work that way. You have to get each character to the steps here. So eye level 10, and then you can boost to uh, to ro to your first one at Vern. And then to do the Rowendell uh, boost, you need item level 460, which you would need normally to do the quest line. The first one is the most valuable because it skips the whole level 1 through 50, 10 to 12 hour experience. Whereas this one is like an hour and a half quest line and it only completes the quest line. It just saves you time and it's up to you whether, you know, a thousand gold is worth more to you uh, later on in the game than an hour and a half of doing a quest line you've done a million times. So this is the first one you need, but don't think that you can skip all these at once and the eye level still needs to be met as a requirement. And the last thing we'll cover today is the power of Trixian. 
if you really don't know what character you want to main, use the training grounds that most people don't know even exists. I get the question all the time, how am I supposed to pick my main character until I've tried them all? And honestly, that's a great question. Thankfully, in Trixian, you can go into Trixian using your sheet music, travel to Beatrice, and talk to her and ask to go to the training grounds. This is essentially just a character editor on crack, and when you're in here, you can make adjustments to your character and try different builds. The big thing that people don't realize about this game, especially once you get better gear in the end game, is your stats will change how your character plays quite significantly. For example, if you're a character that plays Swiftness as your main stat, your attack speed, your movement speed, and your cooldowns get significantly faster, which may take a character that feels slow and clunky to feeling very fast and fluid once you reach tier 3 and you have good gear. But you can simulate this by going into the training grounds. Enter the training grounds. In the top right, you'll see the stats. You can say, hey, I want to use my equip stats or I want to use the services stats. Click the services stats, click this little cog wheel, and then you can redistribute your points however you want. If you want to try full swiftness, you want to try some combination there, you can have that. And then you'll hit go and save. And you can do the same thing for engravings. Engravings, the first two are class engravings that make drastic changes to your character. If you want to see what a red gun lancer feels like, or maybe uh, uh, ignition sorceress or something, come into the training grounds, click here and add it and say, hey, I want to simulate having my class engraving with full stats, hit go, and then you can try it out and see what it feels like. Keep in mind that the other stat, specialization, is different for every character, and some characters rely on this heavily. For example, the Soul Fist specialization gets you back into your hype state faster by lowering the recovery time, which can make the build that relies on your hype state feel much, much better. So you can't fully simulate an endgame character because you won't be able to get gems and you won't be able to get cards and some other things um, and tripods that, that modify your character further, but at least can make you understand how the the uh, the stat distribution and the class engravings modify your character, and maybe being in here can help you understand what class you want to main for the long term. And that's it. I hope this video was informative and it set your mind at ease over whether you need to choose your main class right now before you've had a chance to explore the game. And I think that there's a lot of competition right now to get to the end as fast as possible. But honestly, Lost Ark is a marathon and you should enjoy the way. And there's so many systems in the game that encourage you to play multiple characters, try out multiple characters, try out different builds, and you get lots of opportunities to change your main. So don't freak out about it. Enjoy yourself. Hopefully you learned a little bit. And that's it. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.